on this episode of Building Men Seeking Approval. Welcome to the Building Men Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Meralda. My name is Dennis, and I'm a recovering approval seeker. This episode is going to be a little bit different than my previous podcast episodes. I was with my father yesterday, and I was listening to this podcast. Um, The podcast is called The Great Unlearn, and I referenced it in a previous podcast episode. The host name is Cal Callahan, and during the episode, it was from July 1st, Uh, He interviews someone named Corey Allen. I'll put all the information into the show notes. But uh, he he interviews this guy, Corey Allen, and it was like a a two-and-a-half-hour podcast. And I listened to it, and it really had a profound impact on me. And I would say the, the thing that I came away with more than anything else is just this idea of vulnerability. I spoke about it on a previous episode, but I also, I really started to think about it. So I also spoke to my mother yesterday. And when I was on the phone with her, I thought about this idea of seeking approval. And I was trying to pinpoint where in my life I went down that path where I felt like I had to seek approval from people. And I kind of changed my mindset and, you know, things like that around trying to make other people happy. After kind of going through this, you know, self reflection kind of stage. I listened to a couple of my previous podcasts and so they were titled The Decision, the first one. I had one overcoming fear, your purpose, accountability, resiliency, resistance, buffering. So I listened to all of them and I had this playbook that I kind of followed. I had some research, I had three quotes, maybe a poem, Um, and then a five point plan on how to overcome whatever it was the episode was about. It was really kind of scripted in nature. And so doing that, I kind of re-listening to those episodes. I did some, some kind of internal searching. Um, I realized that I, I thought I was talking to some, you know, nameless guy out there who was struggling. I was talking to someone wherever they were listening from. I'm, I'm not even sure who I thought I was talking to. Honestly, it turns out that this whole time, building men has kind of been a, a look into the mirror for me. I mean, shit, I've struggled my whole life with a lot of these things. And here I'm standing up on this soapbox and I'm preaching to anyone listening about how to do this or how to do that when these are things in my own life that I've struggled with over the last how many years, I don't even know. And these are things that, you know, I'm still working on every single day. And I kind of came to this realization that building men, while I totally believe it's my purpose, it's more than that to me. It's almost like I'm trying to almost like rebuild myself in all of these different areas. And what I'm doing research on a topic and I'm finding quotes about it. What I'm really trying to do is work on me being the best version of me first, because really if, if I can't do that, you know, who am I to talk to anybody else about being the best version of themselves? So here goes on seeking approval. Um, I'm not quite sure when it happened, uh, but at some point, in my life, I think I kind of went off course. Um, I couldn't tell you if it was when I was 10 or when I was 30 years old, but it happened. I kind of, I stopped listening to that voice in my head to, you know, that kind of told me this idea of right from wrong and, um, you know, trusting that voice inside of my head that would tell me to be confident in myself and to stand up for what I believe. And if you disagree with someone, then you like, you speak your truth and, you know, be authentic. Now during the, I'm not going to, you know, tell you to be confrontational, um, you know, ultra confrontational, but I'm, I'm going to talk about the idea of seeking approval. So at some point in my life, I began, you know, changing and, and really thinking that to, to be, you know, the best version of me, I had to make sure that people around me 
were happy. And I like, I wanted to try to make things e easier for other people. Um, but you know, that's, that's not the right way to be, I've realized. So I kind of like really started to look back and see where did this whole thing start for me? So I would say, you know, as I, as I kind of journey back in my head, it's kind of scary to do that first of all, but I look, I think back to like, you know, playing sports as I was, when I was younger and I remember, you know, say I was on, on the baseball field, that was, you know, my main sport as I was growing up and I was a pitcher, played some shortstop and I still remember like as I'm on the hill and I'm, you know, pitching, I remember if I, you know, walked the batter, my first glance was always over in the dugout. My father always coached my sports growing up and I always, you know, I felt like I needed to get his approval. Um, he, I needed to do really well athletically to make him proud of me in some way. I remember playing shortstop and, you know, say I booted a ball at short or threw it away or something like that. I, I still remember like looking over and just thinking he was going to be mad at me or he wasn't, you know, going to have the same level of love for me or something. And that, that idea kind of carried through, um, athletically for me, I always needed to kind of do well. I needed to do like excel in sports to, to gain his approval. And that, that was so important for me growing up. I just, I really, um, I wanted him to think highly of me and that's how I gained his um, his attention was through how well I did athletically. And so, um, shit, this is a, this, it's emotional thinking about this shit, huh? Um, then I started to think about, you know, going from elementary into middle school. And I had a, <clears throat> I had a really, um, really tough time. So when I was in, in sixth grade, um, I remember there were, kids up the street that I was friends with. And, um, you know, at some point during the year, something went south and, uh, they were two years older than me. They were eighth graders when I was a sixth grader. And, um, you know, they started, you know, kind of getting on my case a little bit and making fun of me, you know, on the bus. And then it turned into them getting other people to, to make fun of me. And, um, and it turned into, you know, from a verbal, um, bullying kind of situation to more of a physical situation where, you know, they would chase me home from school and throw rocks at me. And, um, I remember <clears throat> running home from the bus stop and kids like kicked out my legs as I was running and, um, hit me a couple times in the face. Uh, and I remember going home and I couldn't, couldn't bear to tell my parents about it. And, um, I mean, one, I thought that if, if I, if I told them, you know, what was going on, I mean, one, in my father's eyes, I wouldn't look, you know, like the son that he wanted or, you know, manly in his eyes or something. So I he said, oh, you know, I got injured play, you know, in gym class today, we were playing tackle football or something. So I kind of made up this, you know, story about how I, I got, you know, why I, I was kind of beat up a little bit as I was coming home from school. And I remember thinking, what, what am I doing wrong? Like, wh why don't these kids like me anymore? What, what was it? And, uh, at that time I just was like, is there something that I should change about me? So this way these kids not only, you know, like me, but maybe just <laughs> leave me alone. You know, don't, you know, don't come after me like that anymore. And it was, um, it was tough. It was, you know, I, I think back at the, that time in my life and I was like, damn, like I, I had to endure a lot. And that was for, you know, probably like three or four months at the end of my sixth grade year that I dealt with that shit. And it, it had a profound impact on, on me. Coincidentally, it's probably one of the main reasons why I wanted to get into education eventually and why I became a middle school principal, I think, because I really felt strongly that I didn't want anyone to ever go through that shit that I went through. So fast forward a little bit too. So now I'm in, I'm in middle school, right? And, um, 
you know, so I survived that period in my life. But there was still this idea of, you know, trying to get approval for whatever it was. So trying to change who I was to make other people like me or to, um, you know, to kind of uh, fit in or, you know, just blend in or something. And I then I started to think about, um, you know, the opposite sex and girls and um, you know, there were girls that I, that I liked and I wanted to date in, in middle school and there wasn't that reciprocal interest kind of coming back to me. And, uh, I remember thinking that I, I kind of had this thought yesterday as I was driving and I was like, God damn, I actually thought, I remember thinking like, I wish, and I had a couple of friends who were good looking kids who, you know, dated the girls that I thought like that I liked. And I thought, man, if I looked like him, um, I wish I could still be me. Like I still wanted my personality, but I wish I looked like this other kid. And maybe if I did, these girls that I liked would like me. And again, I was like, what can I do to make them want to be around me more? So is it being just really, really nice to them and telling them what they want to hear and, um, being that friend that will do whatever. And, um, so that, that's kind of how I operated for a, a while. And, uh, I, you know, it, it was kind of sad thinking about that. And I, I was like, you know, I wish I could go back and have a conversation with myself as a fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh grader, whatever. I mean, shit, we all probably wish we can go back and have conversations with ourselves at different, uh, points in our life where, you know, there was this event or events that happened that, um, you know, that kind of moved us in one direction mentally or emotionally. So I, I really kind of thought about, again, trying to change who I was or trying to get people to like me and, and seek other people's approval. Now I'll fast forward years and, and now I'm going to, um, I'm an administrator. So I'm a, um, a middle school principal and I, uh, I mean, I worked, I loved the, the school where I worked. It was, you know, just tremendous. And I, I really think it kind of, I think I made some, um, some improvements in, in the school. I think I really helped people. I know there were students who struggled that I feel like I had an impact on, but at the same time, I still was in this approval seeking mindset where, um, I felt like it was almost my job to, to smooth things over and to, um, make people happy. And, um, obviously as a middle school principal, you know, you have to, you have a million things coming at you from all different directions, students, teachers, other administrators, parents, community members. And, you know, you kind of have to, you know, shield, you know, some things and some things you have to go at and some things you, you know, you just kind of, you know, dodge and try to get them at another point. It's just, there's a lot going on. And, um, I remember, you know, there were just difficult things that were coming my way. And for some reason, I just, I went back to that mindset of, you know, all right, let me do what I can to make other people happy. And so I would try to take the path of least resistance and try to, um, I guess I almost like was a, a muted version of myself during that time. And not only professionally, but I feel like it started to kind of trickle into my personal life as well. It's, it was almost where I, I, I tried to, you know, just always say the right thing and try to, to make people like me, to make people happy. And, um, and I wasn't me for this long ass period of time. And I guess as I think about it, I mean, I, I just went along. I, like if people said something that I disagreed with, I would find this clever way to, you know, almost ag agree in a way where I could almost, um, you know, just, all right, if, if I say this, they'll, they'll think that I'm, you know, on this right page or I'm, the, I'm on the same page as them. But, um, you know, but maybe on, you know, on the inside, I wasn't feeling that way. And, but at least there wasn't an argument or there wasn't a dis disagreement or I didn't have a staff that was unhappy. And so I started, you know, kind of living that way professionally. And, and then it, it like I mentioned, it, it was in my personal life too. And, and I just kind of went along for the ride and it was like, I kind of stopped standing up for myself and not like fighting back. And, um, I just was kind of being, and uh, it was, it was almost like 
you know, like wearing this like condom over my whole fucking being, <laughs> you know, like I wasn't able to truly feel anything. I know it's a pretty obscure reference right there, but, um, I just, I wasn't like the full version of me that I could be. And, uh, so after thinking about this, I'm here to tell you that that way of being was wrong. It may be easier and give you maybe a little boost of ego or satisfaction when you feel liked or when you feel like people around you are like, wow, he's really, really a nice guy. But that shit will eat away at you from the inside very slowly. It kind of, it's like, I think of it, there's these ideas of, of things that happen in your life that can be like an avalanche where shit just crashes down. And then there are things in your life that happen and it's almost like erosion. Like picture water cutting through rock, like the Grand Canyon. And all of a sudden you, you, you take a step back and you're like, God damn, what the hell happened here? And that's kind of how I felt, you know, I was operating in my life. But you know what? What the hell is today? We're, well, we're in 2020. It's September 25th when I'm recording this of 2020. And you know what? I feel blessed that I kind of was able to wake up and, and realize the error of my ways and what I was doing wrong for such a long period of time. And so, you know, maybe moving forward, things that I, I say are going to rub people the wrong way. Um, but you know what? That's That's them. That's on them. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to speak what I want to speak and I'm going to, you know, live my truth. And if that, it's, if that's not okay with you, then that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that moving forward. I talked about that idea of fear and fight, flight, freeze and fawn. And the fawn idea was you, you kind of change your point of view to get through a problem or manipulate your way through. That's kind of what I was doing for a long period of time, but not anymore. I am not doing that. As far as, you know, seeking approval, think about it in these ways. And think about if you've done any of these things in your life. I mean, as I'm reading through this, I, I've i definitely done a couple of these uh, things during the past, you know, 30 years of my life, maybe even longer. Changing or softening your position because it someone else seems to disapprove. Absolutely. I definitely did that. Paying insincere compliments to gain approval from someone else. One caveat, though. If your significant other says, does this make me look fat? Say no. Even if it even if it does, stay no. That's one thing that I've learned. Um, so that'll just be a little kind of side note there. Feeling upset, worried, or insulted when someone disagrees with you. Someone else disagreeing with you, that's about them. That's not about you. Stay true to what you think and what you believe in. If someone disagrees with you, that's okay. That's It's not the end of the world. Expressing agreement either verbally or non-verbally when you don't agree. So it could be you're in a situation where someone says something that you're not in agreement with and you shake your head yes, even though inside you're saying no. That 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 action right there, that is... That's approval seeking. You're trying to gain approval from someone else just by nonverbal reactions. Doing something that you don't want to do because you're afraid to say no, or even if you're not afraid to say no, just because you you want to make someone else happy. And I'm not saying being a total prick. I'm not saying like, you know, you don't, you know, compromise in situations. What I'm talking about is giving up who you are to make someone else happy all the time. Um, hopefully that's, that's coming across failing to complain when something is not up to what you want it to be, you know, even if it's like in a restaurant and, and you get something that's not, you know, what you ordered instead of, you know, uh, being like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. You know, I'll eat this, you know, Cobb salad, even though I ordered a filet mignon, like just being okay with being like, you know what? I'm in the mood for steak right now. Bring me my meat. Asking permission when it isn't required. Think about that one. You're asking for someone's permission. Oh, is it okay with you if blah, blah, blah? How about it? if you want to do it, then do it. It's not, you don't need to ask for permission for every single thing that you're doing in life. So think about if that's something that you do. Apologizing for your words or deeds. Oh, I'm so sorry, but can you just go ahead and do this? Or, oh, I'm really, really sorry, but 
you know what? Take that out of it. You just speak it. Just kind of say what's on your mind there. Pretending to be an authority on a subject, even though you're not, you know, to make you look a little bit better in someone else's eyes. Attempting to coax people or manipulate people into saying something nice or complimenting you to maybe like boost your ego or make you feel really good about yourself. And then finally, displaying behavior contrary to your identity or to your purpose. I want to say that's probably the most important thing. So as far as seeking approval, I had to kind of slowly climb out of this if this is your MO in life and this is kind of what you've been doing. And listen, I'm going to kind of go along this journey. If any, if this is anybody else out there, if this reaches anyone, um, I'm going to go through this journey with you right now. So two things, like let's let's try this together. One is say no to something that you don't want to do. So if someone asks you to do something that you don't want to do, say no to it. But don't qualify your no. Don't say, oh, I can't, um, I can't go to the game tonight because of the kids or oh, my wife won't let me or, you know, damn work is getting in the way or whatever it is. So don't qualify your no. If someone asks you to do something that you don't want to do, no, um, I'm not interested in that. No, I'm not going to do that. Try it. I, I just recently tried it. It was kind of cathartic. It was kind of um, uh, like a... Uh, like the medication that I needed in this situation. I, someone asked me to do something that I didn't want to do. And I was just like, no, I don't want to do that right now. And then I kind of sat back and I was like, shit, did I just, did I just say that? And the second thing is if someone doesn't like you for you, if someone disagrees with you, if someone disapproves of you, if someone doesn't like who you are, here's my advice. Fuck them. That's on them. It's not on you. You want everyone to like you, go drive an ice cream truck. Be you. Be the authentic version of yourself. If someone doesn't like you, if someone doesn't approve of you, that is on them. That is their shit, not your shit. So that's all I have for today as far as seeking approval. I'm on the journey to kind of transition away from that mindset in my own head. Hopefully if, you're, if you've been on that, path, maybe you'll join me and you'll try those those two kind of strategies at the end. I have a couple things, big news coming up. One, I started building a Building Men website. My goal is to have the Building Men website up and ready to go by November 1st of 2020. That's my goal. And the second big piece of news is I started to write a book, uh, a Building Men book. Now that there's going to be a specific focus of the book, I'm not going to give away what the idea is about the book yet but it's it's coming it's on its way i'm you know momentum is carrying me in that direction if you want to know more about building men follow me on instagram it's building.men i try to post something up on building men every day um it could be just something about a workout something about meditation it could be about confidence about being the best version of yourself whatever it is i try to do something every day on instagram for building men if you have anything out there that you want to talk about, you want to you know, ask for advice, you, you want to just tell me something, um, email me at buildingmencoach at gmail.com. And you could also text me. I'll put my cell phone number out there. It's 609-227-9404. If you just want to text and say what's up or you want to text and you know BS a little bit about whatever, that's my cell phone number, 609-227-9404. Say no to something this week. Say no to something you don't want to do. Don't qualify it. And if someone doesn't like you, the strategy, fuck them. That's on them. That's not on you. Have a good week, everyone. And I will see you next time on Building Men.